so see if you're ready to go. Let me get a good old OH! I am! Now we're talking. Okay, this is going to be a really fun panel right here. And this is a dedicated Q&A for you all. So we have a microphone dedicated right there. We kindly ask that you keep it one question per person so we can get everyone a chance to ask their question. Unfortunately, if you don't have a chance or if I have to cut the line off early, hopefully you can go down to their tables and meet them downstairs. So without further ado, let's invite the cast. Put your hands together of my hero Stairs, Brittany, if you want to just toss it over. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> it's amazing. Yes, this is the energy that we need on this beautiful Sunday here in Columbus, man. You always bring the energy. What is it about you that is so energetic always? I'm uh, partially being sick. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I've been diagnosed. Really? But partially insane. Yes, indeed. I didn't know there was a, a diagnosis for that. It, it is, apparently. Yeah, Very yeah, cool. Yeah. I think it's genetic. I think I have some of it, too. I think every time I meet you, you rub off on me a little more. Well, I, I, I see it in you. Oh, oh. Yeah, there's a little demon in there. Little demon! <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, thank you guys for coming out. Welcome to Columbus. It's always good to get on stage with you guys and speak about your, your various voice acting uh, choices and your characters and just how you bring these amazing characters to life. It's really wonderful to just sit here and, and chat it up with you guys. So I guess my first question I wanted to talk to you about, of course, My Hero Academia. Um, and this is going to go across the board. We could all take your turns and whoever wants to go first is fine. But um, My Hero Academia has become a cultural phenomenon. How do you think the series has impacted the anime and superhero genres, and what makes it resonate with such a broad audience? That is a great question. I try. I think it's, it's opened people's minds a bit about uh, what kind of superpowers we can put on the table. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of weird, very niche superpowers. And then there's a lot of superpowers that surprise you when they actually can work in a combat scenario, you know? Like Tape for Elbows guy. He's more useful than you'd think. Like he's the search and rescue king. Okay, the searching, uh, the rescuing. He'll <laughs> get you with that tape. Joe's Catch character, it. like he shoots beams out of his I was belly button. Dumb, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's, yeah. I see what you're talking about there. Uh -huh. that, that is an unusual uh, quirk. I eat, quirky, quirk. I eat quirky. stuff, and then I make more of it. So like, if hero work doesn't work out for me, I just become like a weird kind of chef. You're like the pantry food. chef. It's gonna be delicious, doesn't matter what's in it. Whatever's in there, I'm gonna put it together. Bring me what you wanna eat, and mm. I'll just, you know, I eat one thing of the expensive caviar, and then I just start spewing it out of my hand, <laughs> you know? Into my mouth, I hope. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of gross. Oh, what a scene. We need oh, that print. We need that print. We've already ruined this all day. It was that easy. Um, Kevin, do you have a, do you have anything to contribute to this answer? That's oh, geez. Kind of gone off the rails already. Uh, um, well, I mean, it uh, came at just the right time. I think uh, the, the popularity of it also coincided a bit with uh, the rise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, I believe that they sort of fed off of each other a bit. So I think it pro it helped provide the uh, the awareness of uh, comic books and and uh, further awareness of superheroes to all sides of the market. The you got your uh, normies here, your uh, your comic book geeks here, your weebs here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and it sort of made everybody feel like a big family together. I, I think, think lines are blurring, my friend. I, yeah. I, think those, I don't know if those lines even really exist anymore. Exactly. Um, and we have this to thank, I believe. I also think that the, the pandemic kind of changed our relevance in relation to this, in that people were, I don't know, they were kind of desperate to find more content, different content. And if you were into that genre, if you were into the superhero genre, and you kind of burn through all these series, you find this weird little show sure. in Japanimation, and that's what we used to call it when I was a kid. That's how old I am. Uh, but you know, you find this, and you're like, oh wait, this is pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, and and it is. And and I think that. The other thing about having the weirder, more niche powers is that 
is a lot more for different kinds of people to find things to relate to. You know what I mean? Yes. 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 All right, now one thing that we didn't do, we usually do it right up front, so we can take time to do it now. If you don't mind, just introduce yourself and the character that oh, you're yeah. playing. Oh, yeah, huh? For those who don't know. Okay. I'm Kellen. I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm voice overhaul. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad you feel that way. He, he deserves none of it. <laughs> but, I disagree, you're very clean and neat. It's true. It's true. He, um, he, he, uh, yeah. He, he I, 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 think he could be a really good nurse in, a, in another uh, timeline. You know, Re really good doctor. Just keeps everything sterile. You know? What about you? The bedside manner. I worry yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it could be that refreshing sort of uh, like honesty. Yeah. <laughs> Very blunt. You're dying. <laughs> Well, thanks for giving it to me straight, God. Uh, I'm Aaron Dismuk. I voice Tamaki Amajiki. Uh, Are you a third of the big thirds? Yeah, I'm one third of, of the big thirds. Uh, I'm the shy one. Yeah, right. I'm Brittany Karbowski. I voice Kami. And I'm Ernesto Jason Liebrecht. I voice Dobby. It's true, we are the, we are the cookies. We have boxy lamb. Or the bread. I think we're the cookies. We're the, co we're the cookies. Because we're so very sweet. And we're smart, we're smart cookies. That's right, smart cookies, I like this. So and, you're you're the, and you're the cream, because you're smooth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a smooth. Yeah, I'm a smooth talker. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Watching the, watching the avod of this, sorry. <laughs> Where's Sarah? Who's Sarah? Here. Sarah, Sarah is your blue, right? Right. No, no, he's oh, you watching the butt. He's imagining oh, her watching YouTube I think and being like, somewhere. you're the cream of what cookie, Aaron? <laughs> the, the, the villain cookie. Yeah, the yeah. smart cookie. Uh, I'll just, yeah. Looks up at you with her hands on mm. her hips. <laughs> hey, on a side note, Aaron, did you get the, the double A thing? Like, me calling you double A? Because Elizabeth read my message and was like, well, who is I? I think I got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That was in reference to a personal text. <laughs> this is when we like to sort that sort of thing out. <laughs> I've been into importing and exporting, and I can't decide which one I want to concentrate on, importing or exporting. Very sorry. inside <laughs> joke. Very good for a public panel. Very nice. <laughs> hey, Thanks, Kelly. I'm great at this. <laughs> All right, so speaking about your characters, now that we've established that, I wanted to ask what aspects of your own personality do you find most reflected in the character you voice in My Hero Academia? What me? You, to everyone. You, 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 you. This, this, it's hard. This question's hard for me because I know that uh, Colleen has said that she, in a lot of ways, has cast kind of based off of, of people's actual personalities. Yep. Um, but Kami is vapid. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know if I like that. But um, uh, so I, I, would, I hope that I'm not that much like her. I am I'll, I'm bubbly. Um, I will say that. Um, <laughs> But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that uh, ditzy. Can I, can I, can I break in a little bit? I do think that this is true. I think that she's considering our personalities when she casts us. But I feel like she has taken the first personality that she met uh, before she knew us very well. So she kind of, I don't know, she made us like a stock character as real people in the real world. And that's what the casting was based on. That's what Colleen thought of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Does it work for everyone? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not a psychopath anymore. <laughs> thank, I still like burning things. Thanks for the button. I was about to help you clarify. <laughs> What was the question? The question was, <laughs> what aspects of your own personality do you find most reflected in the character you voice? Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to think that I'm a pretty <laughs> blunt person. Um, I'm very driven. <laughs> um, I, uh, <laughs> huh? Um, I'm clean. I'm clean. I like I like hand sanitizer. Yeah, my drink of You're choice. masked currently. I'm masked currently. Hand sanitizer is my drink of choice. Right 
Yeah. You joke, man, but is that, I saw, I saw that the show. Not that Aaron big. saved me. This feels like Overhaul got out of jail and is trying to like do a job <laughs> application. <laughs> Religion. Yeah, <laughs> got a few tattoos. Well, based on my criminal record, which I presented in lieu of a resume, um, <laughs> I think you can see that I am very driven. Um, <laughs> I almost did it. I almost did it, and I think that was a. a the, this is still the job interview. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know what? I can have that same drive for Microsoft. I can. I can do whatever. Whatever you guys need. Yeah. See, I was thinking parole denied. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, buddy. Shawshank. Yeah. You probably get denied until he's an old man. That's that's right. That's right. It's all those people you were Uh Yeah, I I have struggled with anxiety in person auditions. That old the old demon still rises up within me to like give me the shakes and, and make me run out of air sooner than I should. Uh, and I think that happened at my My Hero Academia audition, like for season one. I remember when I was leaving that audition, I was like, okay, well, that happened. You know, the good news is that's in the past. And then I think that's why, you know, four, four years later, she was like, she was like, Aaron, I have the perfect role for you. And he's just crippled by anxiety, you know, <laughs> like you. Oh, thanks. She does kind of present it that way though, right? She's yeah. like, oh, she's like, I found your guy. Yeah. What does that say about it? Yeah. <laughs> Great thing to be known for, yeah. Um, I do run hot, like, legitimately. Like, I believe that. I am sweating right now, I'm really, really warm. Which works out because my girlfriend is like an icicle. Uh, not not personality-wise, but Elizabeth is distinctly, like, uh, very, very cold. And, uh, yeah. until she falls asleep, and then she becomes like a heater, which is kind of crazy. Um, I suffer from pretty extreme abandonment issues. That's legit. Uh, my mother gave me up when I was three, and that's okay. I'm not gonna say that because it's like a super sad thing. Um, but she did, and we're good now, and uh, you know, we, we've got a great relationship. She's got a great relationship with my son. Uh, she just, she was young. She made other choices and, you know, left me with the insane Chilean, because that seemed like a great idea at the time. And I am the man I am today because of these decisions. That doesn't change the fact that I still have this issue with abandonment. Uh, that is something that the we won't abandon you. We I appreciate you. that. We love you. I appreciate that. I, I do have some some like fail safe defense mechanisms that kick in, uh, and mostly like when I was really immature, it was like I will reject you before you were you will reject me. You, I will not give you a chance to reject me. The second there's any trouble, I'm out, and you're gone, and you're blacklisted. I don't do that anymore. Like I've gotten over that. Uh, but but yes, I do find that I relate to the Dobby because of the whole situation with the dad and my mom and all that stuff. Like, that's probably the big one. And I like fire. Fire's cool. <laughs> well, the fans won't give up on you either. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Because he's relatable, right? Because he's not perfect. It's surface. He's like us. He's like, he's, you know, we're flawed, right? We've all been through shit. I'm sorry, excuse me, stuff. Yeah, that's a, that, That's another cool thing about my here is there's not one character in there that's perfect at all. They all have their flaws and they all use them uh, in their quirks and, and uh, they use them to fight and they, it, there's a lot of character development for like every single character and there's a lot of them that, well, <laughs> well, the good majority of them, right? I, I would say that that most of the villains have a pretty intense backstory, the ones that they've delved into. Uh, and there are some heroes with, with that kind of messed up backstory as well. But there are distinctly some heroes, like who does Austin Tindall play? He plays like the head of 1B. He's like, How far that, guy, that guy's pretty surface, right? Like, How far have you read in the manga? Oh, I don't do that, that guy. I can't do that. <laughs> Nobody tells they, don't what, they don't know what happens before it happens to me. Nobody tells me. No spoiler. Does he, have a, does he have a deep, dark backstory? Nobody tell him. <laughs> does he? No spoiler. No spoiler. No comment? No spoiler. Everybody catch a bubble. Though. Don't say anything. No spoilers. I love catch a bubble. I love that catch that's a bubble in mainstream. I teach, I teach kids six days a week, so it's like, I've never heard this catch expression. Catch a bubble. You have two ears and one mouth for a reason, so you can listen twice and talk once. Catch a bubble. Catch a bubble. And they all go, Aww. and then they'll listen. Crazy. It works. It works. Charming. Use it. Use they think it. it's funny. They think it's, it's, it's like it's cute to them, so they'll do it. Um, 
All right, let's keep moving. And you can start lining up here. This will be my final question, and then you guys can uh, take aim at it. We'll get as many as we can in the oh, time allotted. Sure. So I wanted to ask, um, here we go. Do you have any uh, particular uh, favorite scene or moment from the series that stands out to you, either because of your character's involvement or another character's? Yes. <laughs> Great answer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And with that, which, should I tell you which one? No, you don't have to tell me which one. That's actually, I like you, that answer. You guys know which one, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? You don't know? The past never dies. Um, I think my favorite moment of Kami, I just, I tend to go for the funny moments more than anything else, but, um... I don't have any of those. When Kami first meets Todoroki, she just immediately hits on him, and I think it's hilarious, and he's so, like, ew. <laughs> and, uh, she's just like, can I have your number? And you can just see it's like, oh. Like, <laughs> it's so great. Um, yeah, that part is very, very fun. Yes. Yeah. I can go. Or, I'm sorry, Aaron. Oh, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so yes, I guess we're going right to the Q&A. Thank you for chiming in. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And my question is, is what was the most emotionally intense scene you've recorded in My Hero so far? Oh. Well, <laughs> um, at the end of season four, I, I hope everybody's caught up to that. Um, Overhaul uh, does lose, and he also loses both his arms, and he, uh, it, he, he's sort of just lying on the pavement, and Shigaraki leans in, and I forget the exact words, but it's like the nail in the coffin that Overhaul has failed. And in that moment, um, what I believe Overhaul's uh, driving force is he, he wants to repay his boss, uh, who is also his father figure, because he's part of the Shieha Sakai, a mafia thing. He wants to repay uh, the boss for taking him in off of the streets as a kid and raising him. Um, but he has a bit of a weird, mess, messed up way of doing it. Um, he, uh, he wants very much for the Shieha Sakai to rise to prominence and be like the superpower in Japan, at least, I believe. Um, and uh, to do that, you know, he was going to corner the market with these uh, quirk erasing drugs and quirk bringing back drugs and, um, and, you know, make a lot of money for his pops. But his pops is like, no, that's immoral, you're crazy. Uh, so Overhaul's like, okay, let me do this for you, coma. So <laughs> Overhaul cannot use his powers without his arms at the time, and in that moment where Shigaraki's leaning down to him and basically doing the you lost uh, thing, I, I believe, I want to believe that Overhaul is realizing, oh man, I left my dad in a coma and now I can't take him out and I'm going to jail. So I just, <laughs> so he, you, he just lets out this blood curdling scream after that. I think that's, that, I think that, that big makes the bill, yeah. Yeah, so this will be a little less than that. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have started with that. Uh, you know, I think the most <laughs> the most range you get with Tamaki is during his fight with the expendable guys, the guys who consider themselves trash that got taken in by overhaul. Um, and the cool thing about Tamaki is because his, his anxiety and low self-esteem sort of are uh, accompanied by his high esteem for other people. And so the moment that he realizes that he has a sort of a line, a path that can lead to him beating these three guys that he's up against, is the moment that he realizes that they're not all bad. Um, he sees that they care about each other and that they would never hurt each other. And so he uses one of them as a human shield. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't expect that from Wholesome Little Tomaki, did you? <laughs> so it's in the moment he's like, oh, there's good in you. I'm gonna use that to defeat you. <laughs> and he, so his last words are respect for them. He's like, and friends don't eat friends, do they? And I think that's, you know, an emotionally complex thing because in a way you're punishing someone for the good in them, which might make them less good in the future, but you also have to win um, in that situation. The stakes are too high, so yeah. I don't think Kami really 
cares about what anybody thinks. Um, and I, I don't see her actually, she doesn't have any emotional parts. Um, it's it's a lot a lot more of um, I don't think she puts time into having emotions. I feel like that's that's one of her superpowers is that she doesn't I don't know yeah that is a superpower. I wish I had that superpower of not caring what anyone thought. That would seem you know. Would really, that be your quirk? Just not caring. Be, yeah, just to not care how anybody perceives you or how you know just not care. That'd be a, they're really great. I've got friends that have the ability to compartmentalize very very well. Chris Sutton is one of those people. <laughs> can uh, like. If something happens to us mutually, that it, like it'll really bother the crap out of me until I directly confront whatever it is. But him, he can just like put it somewhere in this cavern in the back of his brain and never visit it again. And he's fine. And it doesn't hurt him. And I'm like, how do you do that, dude? Because I'm gonna think about this until I explode or I defeat it. Anyway, that would be a great power to have. Yeah. So I think that there, Kimmy doesn't have a lot of emotional uh, moments. But yeah, I don't think she cares that much. Yeah. Well, there've been a couple uh, recently, um, yes. and you'd think it'd be confronting my deadbeat dad. Uh, that is distinctly one for sure. But that was oddly uh, invigorating and satisfying. Um, I've told a few of you who met me that I waited. I knew that that was coming for three years because of the manga, and I was not allowed to say anything or do anything or act it out. So. Um, people have asked me if I was nervous when that big moment came up that was highly anticipated. The answer is no, I was ready, like really, really ready. It was like they let me out of a cage. Uh, so, so emotional, but, but not, not you know, deep and dark, not like what you experienced. Mm -hmm. I have had that feeling too, though, and that's when Twice was killed. Uh, that was, that was, like I said, I don't read ahead. I've had some stuff spoiled. I generally know what's happening, but in terms of the detail, I don't. And that was one that was a complete and utter surprise to me when I recorded it. So, uh, and I'm a person that tends to react, like I feel whatever it is. So, you know, if you're hearing my first or second take, what you're hearing is me actually, you know, surprised or angry or sad or whatever it is. And in that instance, that was a, that was a big, heavy emotional blow. Thank you. All right, that was our first question. And I can tell, we're gonna have like three. I can already tell we're not gonna get through this line, so I apologize in advance, I'll be the bad guy. I'll have to cut the line off at some point. But um, yeah, let's uh, keep it moving. What's your name? And Should we try to keep our answers a little bit more concise? Would, well, that, would that help? Well, if anyone doesn't get a chance to answer their question, they can always come and meet you down at your table That's true. and ask That's them true. So okay. we'll just try to get as many as we can, and you know, I'm not gonna censor you guys. Just let it flow, and we'll see how it goes. All right, all right, hi. What's you know we could talk person? forever, right? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Uh, I'm Barbie. I do have a quick question in the okay. sense of, <laughs> um, do, should we direct it one question at one person, or do you want us to direct it at everybody? Um, again, I don't want to have to censor you as well. It, it just if there's anything that's inappropriate or anything, I'll let you know, but just ask your question and we'll, we'll field it from there. Okay, so um, also Jason, I literally almost passed out yesterday after meeting you legitimately, and it's never happened in my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, well, it, um, it's, but my question, I'm glad you made it, and you look great today. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but my question is, at what point in your voice acting career, like what was the moment you went, oh my god, I'm famous, people know me, people recognize me. What was that moment that it clicked? I still kind of refuse to admit to that. <laughs> I, I just like to see it as like, there's a lot of people that like what I do. Um, Cause it, it's a very easy trap to like fall into uh, inflation of ego uh, when, when you go down that path. Um, this is just me, by the, by the way, but um, I guess that point when I was like, wow, people, Re a lot of people really like what I do is probably um, when I booked uh, Fun Time with Freddy for the uh, for Five Nights at Freddy's uh, Sister. <laughs> 20, 2016, we're, we, that was seven years ago, guys. We're old. <laughs> um, and uh, it's only been up ever since, and it's changed my life, and I'm really grateful to have met you all. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, 
My most famous work was Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> which I was cast in 20 years ago. So, yeah, I, I needed to do what he I did take it back. Doing. I take it back. <laughs> How old were you when you started recording that show? 11. Please. I was 11. 11 years old. He was 11. Yeah. So, uh, my, my dad did a very uh, good job of, of keeping me humble on that. And so the question for me was never like, when will I be famous? It was always, when can I make a living uh, from acting? Uh, and that moment came right after the pandemic uh, because of conventions, because something happens to conventions after the pandemic for me. Uh, I don't know what, but now I can make a living and I don't have to do, I don't have to direct, I don't have to wait tables like I did for a long time. I don't have to do script work. Um, I still do those things, but I'm I do them like you do script when I want to. I'm very glad that you do script work. Thank you. Uh, dude. I, I read something you um, wrote recently uh, out loud into a microphone <laughs> that I was so stoked with, I have to tell you. Uh, so stoked to hear it, dude. 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 I can't say anything. You wrote uh, uh, Porco's Death in Attack on Titan. That made me cry, dude. Yeah. You are a very talented writer. I'm Thank glad, you. I'm glad, but I'm glad you know that you're so good. Oh but I'm I'm glad that you know you're. The, this is really thanks to you guys that we can just like do whatever we want to do now. So thank you guys. Oh, that's it. I really find that um, it, it's more of a dream that I still don't wake up from. Um, it's not like, I don't know, it's always kind of surreal, like not reality for me, and I don't know why that is that way. It always has been. Um, but I feel like that the, the fandom does as much for me as, as, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's very symbiotic. We don't get to do this if you guys don't watch it and enjoy it. Um, and it's incredibly humbling, almost to the point to where sometimes I, I don't even know how to react or like what words and there's just fog in my brain and I'm like how do I give to you what you get just gave to me um, and a lot of times I even leave conventions um, just thinking about individual experiences and worrying about like oh did I did I have you know like did I give them what what they did for me did did I don't know so um, and I've, I've always kind of just felt that way it's sort of just a dream uh, yeah I mean I agree with what everyone said um, I don't know that I have acknowledged that to that extent. Um, it's like when, when you tell me that you're nervous when we meet, I'm always like, why? I'm nervous. Like, what are you talking about? Um, the other thing is, I'm a single dad of a 14, 15 year old. My, my son's birthday was yesterday, and I was here with you guys. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. It's all good. We talked about it. I missed last year because of his birthday. This year I came. It was, uh, you know, a little give and take there. But my son, uh, I mean, I get up at 5.30 every school morning and I make French toast and, uh, and poached eggs for this super spoiled kid and, and I mow the lawn because it's too hot outside and I don't want him to get heat stroke and, and I keep the house clean and make sure that he's happy and, and gets what he needs and, you know, and I, I take great pleasure in that. My soul walks around this earth in that boy's body and, and he doesn't acknowledge this in any way, shape, or form. Um, as a matter of fact, if he has friends come over and they acknowledge what I do for a living, he shuts them down immediately. He's like, that's just Papa. Papa, we're gonna need a snack. And I'm like, okay, please? He's like, yes, please. He's like, okay, great. Uh, but, but having a kid and uh, having that role be your primary purpose in life uh, kind of prevents the ego from kicking in in a way that, I don't know, I've got somebody that's always gonna take me down a peg because I'm just, I'm just freaking popular. I mean, but it's also a great honor. Like, it's also uplifting. So, yeah, I don't know that I've fully felt that yet. I've been making a living as an actor for 20 years now, I guess, without doing something else, which is remarkable. You're, you're right, man. That's, to get to that point was extremely difficult. Um, but we're still, nothing is set in stone for us. Like, this is still a crazy, crazy life. Despite 22 years of credits for me, I still audition all the time and don't get it. I still, you know, if I book one job out of 20 auditions, I'm doing great. So that also keeps you humble because what we do here, just getting the work. Like you work harder just getting the work than you actually work on the work itself. And that's, that will keep you, for, for the most part, I know there's some outliers and I've met a few people that 
are full of themselves in a way that I don't understand. But that's okay, those people are my friends, and, and they can be how they are, and I can be how I am. I, I like all these people up on this stage, and not one of these people has an ego that I can even see. So, yeah, it is what it is. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Barbie. All right, I believe this is uh, question three. I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Riley Account. I hope you're doing a bit better. Oh, I'm doing great, thank you. This is just overabundance of caution right here. It's okay. Um, so, <laughs> this is kind of a kind of a stupid, funny question, but um, if your characters were like, I don't know, content creators on, say, YouTube, what do you think their what do you think their content would be on? <laughs> stupid, funny question. Right now. Have you ever seen Fire Dancers? <laughs> Either that, or he'd be like some kind of crazy barbecue chef. That just like flash cooks things real, real fast. I'm like, Etsy perfectly medium rare. The hibachi guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or hibachi, you're right, right. I can see him working at Danny Hall. Or like a prankster, like heating up doorknobs of public bathrooms. Or Sounds like you need to do this. This sounds yeah, This is a great idea. I need to get some flame powers. Yeah. I feel like Amy would like animate fan fictions because she could just be all of the characters um but that would yeah you know, that would get her into some trouble but uh yeah she just whatever fan fiction is in her head she could just make so yeah it'd be all the characters just turn the camera off and go be the other person and then turn the camera off and go be the other person uh kellen suggested muck bangs which is really <laughs> wait what did you just say muck bangs okay that was not what i heard <laughs> I heard another word in banks, and I bad my brain went somewhere. Anyway, uh, Tamaki wouldn't feel comfortable being in front of the camera, so I suppose it would be a POV mukbang channel. So you would just watch food go under the camera, and then maybe he'd shoot a little out of his finger. You would never get a face review. Wait, is that legit your see. power? Like, that's what you do? Yeah. You shoot food out of your hands? Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> I can also make it appear on my face or my feet. I got like 50 million views or something. Yeah. And this is useful in battle? Well, okay, so I eat a chicken and I can manifest any part of the chicken and I can make it bigger. So then I can grow chicken wings, but big, and then I can fly. And then they got it. They're like, "Oh, we gotta eat that wing, so we can't fight this dude." And then while they're eating the wing, you, you beat him up from behind. Well, no, I. It's a real. It'll grow as a real chicken. Oh, out, out of you? Yeah, out of me. So it'll look like I have wings with feathers. It won't look like Kentucky Fried Chicken. But that is what I pictured. I pictured hawks. I pictured buffalo wings with sauce. So, so if you heard, you would mukbang with a, a live chicken. <laughs> what, if you, what if you eat a person? Yeah, so actually, <laughs> this is what I normally say for the table talk, but uh, I have advocated limited cannibalism, consensual cannibalism, uh, with Sean uh for a long time. I think that this could really take him far in the hero world. He just needs a little hair, because if he gets any of you, he can manifest any of you. So if he got to like eat just a little bit of Bakugo hair, he could manifest the sweat glands and have explodey tentacles. He does a lot of tentacles. <laughs> They're useful. <laughs> They're pretty good style. Okay. It's not that bad. Well, it's like your nails or something. It's not that bad. hurts right now. <laughs> it's not Do you know this? Yeah, that, was so, that was so funny. I did not know this. That was so funny. <laughs> Hey, it's really messed up. Like <laughs> fried chicken wings is yeah. hilarious, but giant. I love that too, though. I envision buffalo wing sauce, like orange ones. I need this drawn. <laughs> yeah, you date an artist, right? Uh, uh, she's very busy. Okay. Um, so. I, I I can't think of what he'd actually do because he probably doesn't want anything to do with social media. But if we're if we're talking like younger overhaul in a timeline where he's like not as um, I I feel like either like like pimple popping videos oh. and he can like make them big explode, you know? Oh. Uh, <laughs> 
or or just like um, my chemical romance AMVs with like <laughs> the <laughs> Metal Alchemist the intro and stuff. I can, you can see that, right? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was a fun question. I don't know what I did, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you did some stuff. All right, thank you so much. All right, question four. What's your name and your question? Hi, my name is Ricky, and my question is, um, if you guys had not been cast in your designated roles in the show and had the choice of being being able to voice another character, who would you want that to be? Like, if you could voice someone else. Midnight. <laughs> I don't know how, but I felt like you were gonna say that. I don't know how. Behave. You behave. Okay, Ricky? Oh, dear mercy. I mean, if we can, uh, stay. Oh. Yeah. 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 These are great ideas. Too bad Colleen's not here and we're not in the past. <laughs> I, I, have, I have to proceed this by saying Jared is doing better than I ever could, but I love Shinso. That's a great character. Yeah. Um, so I actually auditioned for Tamaki in the original thing. It was Overhaul and Tamaki. Um, that, that could have been a fun universe where it ended up that way. You were Overhaul and Tamaki. Oh, that would be nuts, dude. That would be nuts, <laughs> I don't think I could have done the. You did. You would have done it. You made some good sounds. You would have done. <laughs> you made some noises, dude. Now you know where I came up with Muffbang. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, no, you would have done it the Aaron way, and I'm actually curious uh, how how that would have come out. Um, but uh, I have always loved Kaminari. That would have been really fun. Yeah. That would have been really fun. Kyle does amazing. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Ricky. Thank you. All right, hi, what's your name and what's your question? Uh, hi, I'm Samantha. Hey, Samantha. <laughs> uh, all of you, by the way, are amazing. Thanks, Samantha. And, uh, yes. My question is, did you, have, did you have to go through, like, a couple of different uh, voice actors before you got the role? Or was it just a matter of finding the right one that would fit that character that you played? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Um, go it, it's funny because when I got the auditions, um, I had just come back from uh, Dragon Con, and anybody who knows Dragon Con knows you don't come back without some venereal or uh, or, or uh, <laughs> so, some kind, something going on with you. Uh, <laughs> so um, so I came back with bronchitis, and uh, I uh, I would. I got, you know, when you get the audition, you do it. You have to do it no matter what. Um, so I tried to, I, I, I was like, well, maybe I can lean into like a Steve Bloom thing and like make it raspy anyway. You know? <laughs> um, but uh, Colleen came back and was like, so the voice you did for Tomaki, that was just your normal voice? That's good. You do that. Do, do that for a second take. So. It took five hours, but I strained out um, the, the six lines or, or whatever it was without coughing or, or cracking in between. And um, so, yes, to answer your question, it would have been more gloomy yeah, if, if <laughs> in another universe. I, I have no recollection. I know I did the audition from home. Uh, and I know that Colleen had specifically already talked to me about it, and she said that she wanted me to uh, to keep it low. She was like, I don't want it to be an annoying anxiety. And I was like, yeah, because anxious people, like, we mostly are scared that people will realize how annoying we are. And so that's, that's why actual anxiety often sounds a lot lower pitched. So I knew that. And then I think it was just like a... Like a, a process of sounding, it's a lot of sounding like I'm gonna throw up and then pushing it down. <laughs> That's kind of the flow. Yeah. Uh, the direction with uh, Kami, because of her secret, I guess at the very beginning, it, it's it's pretty. It's been a long time, so it is a spoiler. But she has a, another identity at the beginning, um, and her direction was um, overtly sultry. Like, and so I just did my best version of that, but we actually didn't know how Kami was gonna sound as herself. Um, and we had done the game in between actually seeing Kami. 
Um, so it, the the game, I remember when we were recording it, we called Kali and we're like, how how does Kami sound? Because we don't know. Um, and so we they said, well, just kind of do like a, a, the same thing because we don't know yet. So her in the game is actually a little bit more of a mix um, between her secret identity version and who she actually is. Because then she comes back in and she sounds really, really like, oh my God, and you know, um, so, uh, but yeah, she was very sultry before, so yeah. All right, thank you so much for your question. Thank you so much. All right, now, now due to time, I have a feeling like this is gonna be our final question. So to everyone in line, I apologize. But uh, please visit them down at their tables and ask their question. Uh, ask your question there. All right. So hi. What's your name? What's your question? Hi. Some of you may remember me as Paper. You know the object. It's a pun. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be a fairly quick question. If your character was a soup, what kind of soup would it be? <laughs> I'm sorry. Tomato bisque. <laughs> Minestrone. Eh, chicken noodle, why not? <laughs> hey, we got more time! Yeah, we got more time! Thank you Yay! so much. I can Thank conceptualize that question for months. Dude, very nice. Well, if we lightning round like this, we get a couple. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, name and question. My name is Lex. My question is, if you could change your character's quirks, what would you change the quirk to? <laughs> Teleportation. <laughs> <laughs> Electricity. I want to be able to send farts anywhere. <laughs> I just want to be able to, wherever, like if my little brother is at a hotel, country, you know, in a different country, I want to be able to just keep sending him farts. <laughs> where he just doesn't understand where it's coming from. Because that gives me joy, and I don't know why. I'm a little kid. I don't know. I want to control and manipulate time. Thank you. All right, let's sneak another question in here. Hi, name and question. Hi, my name is Ian. Hi, um, Ian. What would you say is how you get into character for each session? How do you, how, what helps you get into character? I remember high school. <laughs> Fair. Fair. M music actually helps a lot. I, I, I wasn't pulling MCR out of nowhere. I used to listen to MCR before recording sessions for Overhaul. Um, I mean, I, I always warm up, but um, usually it's more of like a physicality in the booth while recording that, that differentiates my characters. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of head stuff with uh, Kami to sound ditzy. I remember the pain of being given up. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Merry hey, Christmas. I mean, I mean, this, I, our final question, here it is. Um, I do have something to ask real quick. Are you on the phone? Um, I'm recording. Oh, okay. Um, um, I have a friend who absolutely loves My Hero Academia. Could you give her a shout out? Her name is Kate. And she can't be here today. Hey, Kate. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hey, Kate. It's okay. Kate. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, um, I just wanted to ask, what would your favorite character outside of what you guys voice would be your favorite character in the show? Midnight. <laughs> Chinso. Kaminari. Check it out, dude! That's amazing. We made it, everybody. I'm sorry for everyone who didn't get a chance to ask a question, but one more time, let's get a big round of applause for the cast of Midnight. Chinso, here we go. 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 Here we go.